Well hello Internet and welcome to part 4 of my electronics video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial we're going to focus in 100% on transistors but we're also going to review everything that we covered in all of the previous parts of those tutorials. So if you haven't watched those you probably should watch those first otherwise you might be confused and I have a lot to do so let's get into it. And here you can see the different schematic diagrams that we have for transistor. And a transistor is a semiconductor component that is used to amplify or switch electronic charges. And we can switch charge flow on and off. And we can also amplify small signals into large ones required to use other components. And it uses a small current to control a larger current. An advantage of a transistor is that many of them can fit on a small piece of silicone and their discovery actually led to the discovery of integrated circuits as we're going to see in later parts of this tutorial. And two of the most common transistors are bipolar junction transistors and field effect transistors and we're going to see a lot of them in circuit diagrams as the tutorial continues. Now we're mainly going to focus on bipolar junction transistors. You're going to see a whole bunch of circuit diagrams in regards to those. And BJTs contain both a P-type, which contains a positive charge carrier, and an N-type semiconductor, which contains a negative charge carrier. Now NPN transistors contain a P-type between two N-types, and PMP transistors contain an N-type between two P-types. And by changing the voltage on the base and the emitter, you control the flow of the current through the transistor. And examples we're going to show here are going to show exactly how this is going to work in practice. And now we'll take a look at field effect transistors. Now they're going to contain either a N or P-type semiconductor from top to bottom, which is going to conduct charge when the opposite N or P-types on the side allow for conductivity. And whenever the gate has a voltage applied to it, charge flows from the source to the drain. Now to use a water analogy, a transistor is kind of like a faucet that controls the flow of water with a shutoff valve. Now the flow can either be on, off, or partially on, and in this way it acts almost like a variable resistor. And here we have a model of an MPN transistor. Basically the current is going to flow through the collector and base and then flow out of the emitter. And the VBE is going to represent a diode. VCE is the voltage that will change depending upon the amount of charge flowing into the base and then the current that flows out of the emitter is going to equal the sum of the current from the collector and base and if voltage flowing into the base is below a certain level normally about 0.7 volts no current will flow through the transistor. And as the base voltage increases, the resistance is reduced incrementally and the current through the collector is going to increase and whenever the resistance is at zero, the current through the collector will be equal to the current through the emitter. And here I'm going to demonstrate how the transistor will break the circuit if a current isn't applied to the base, which the base is the center part of our transistor. And I'm going to put in an SPDT switch inside of here, connect this all up, and then I'm going to put in a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And then I'm going to get my transistor and make sure that that resistor goes to the base for the transistor, as you can see right there. The emitter, which is the top part of our transistor, is going to connect over to the negative terminal and then we're going to put in the LED which is going to connect to the collector and then we're going to put in a 1 kilo ohm resistor and connect that to the plus side and we're going to be using a 9 volt battery and whenever we switch it on you can see the base is getting a current it lights up and here it is not. And here I demonstrate the same with a PNP transistor and an NPN transistor and we're using the transistor here as a switch by cutting off the charge to the base and as long as the voltage of the base is below 0.7 volts in the design it is still essentially a switch. And this is why transistors make great switches because they are small, require little power, and can turn on and off billions of times per second. And those are just a few of the reasons why they are also used in integrated circuits. And now I'll talk about how a transistor can use to amplify a current. Whenever a transistor is used as an amplifier you're basically going to provide just enough current to flow to the base to make it functional or to put it in another way the small signal you want to amplify is going to flow into the base and the transistor is going to turn it into a larger signal. Now first we're going to put in a 1 kilo ohm resistor and then we're going to put in a 100 kilo ohm resistor and I'm going to have to move that up because I put that in the wrong place but I'll move that in a second put my transistor in and there you can see I have the resistor which is now going to go in with the LED the long end is going to go up towards the top the short end down towards the bottom 
And then we're going to put the other LED, short end and then long end, and this is going to connect into the collector at the bottom. So it's going to go from the LED into the base, and then we're going to flow our voltage from the negative to the emitter part of our transistor. And now you can see after we connect this exactly how it's going to work. Here we are using two LEDs to show it how exactly a transistor amplifies. When the transistor receives a low voltage that just turns it on, fluctuations in the signal received by the base get amplified. So you can see one LED is brighter than the other. And you want to use resistors to make sure the transistor isn't saturated so that the signal stays stable. So as you can see here, let me turn lights off. You can see there is a little bit of light in the top LED and an amplified light in the LED underneath. And here is a schematic diagram of the circuit that you just saw and notice how the low current is going into the left LED and also the right LED is lighting up here. And here we're going to slow the charge and discharge of an LED with a capacitor of course using a transistor and I actually plug that into the wrong part of the switch but we'll connect that and fix it in a second. And we start off with a 680 kilo ohm resistor and then we're going to plug in our capacitor and make sure that the shorter leg goes towards the left and then we'll connect power to our capacitor and then we're going to put in a 470 ohm resistor and plug in our transistor then we want to make sure that we have current going to the emitter part of our transistor and then we'll put in the LED and of course connect our 9 volt battery and here I'll make a little correction to make sure that the resistor and the lead wire there connect to the switch properly now basically the 680 kilo ohm resistor is going to control how long it takes to charge the resistor and the 470 ohm resistor controls the discharge. Now when the switch is flipped the charge goes towards the charging capacitor and whenever the capacitor voltage reaches 0.7 volts approximately the transistor turns on the LED. The current rises through the LED because of the transistor's current gain. This allows for a slow charge time but still a bright LED. And then when a switch is turned off, the capacitor discharges and the LED dims until the voltage to the transistor's base goes below 0.7 volts and then the LED eventually turns off. And here you can see a schematic diagram for the circuit that we just built. And here's our switch, here's our capacitor, there's the resistors, there's the LED, and here is our transistor. And if I close this switch, you pay attention here, as I close it, you're going to see current starts to flow, and then the capacitor is going to get a charge. And then whenever I shut it off, it's going to continue to charge. It actually charges longer than that, but you can see here that the capacitor is actually charging and allowing the LED to continue lighting up thereafter. And now I'm going to use two transistors in what is known as a Darlington configuration, as you'll see. And we're first going to hook up our SPDT switch, and then we're going to put in a resistor. This is going to be a 100 kilo ohm resistor. And make sure that the capacitor, the negative lead or long lead, is facing towards the left side of the screen. And then we're going to put in our transistor. Then we'll connect a lead wire from the emitter part of our transistor. And then we're going to connect another lead wire to the collector part of the transistor. Place another transistor in. Make sure you put your LED in properly. And then I'll be placing in a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor and we're going to plug that into the positive terminal of course and then we're going to put in a 470 ohm resistor with a 9 volt battery and we're going to connect all that up. Now this circuit is the same as the previous except this time I used two transistors in the Darlington configuration where they are basically leading into each other. And here the current flowing through the emitter of the top transistor flows to the base of the bottom transistor so that the current is being amplified twice. And since we are using two transistors we require a voltage of 1.4 volts to power the LED. And here is a schematic diagram using the Darlington with the two transistors right next to each other. And you can see here that we have our switch on and if we close it, you're going to see that the current continues to flow for much longer so that we're able to continue lighting our LEDs using the power that's stored up in the capacitor. Now we're going to create a voltimeter which in a pretty neat way and it's going to allow us to measure the difference between voltage in any two points of a circuit. First we're going to put on a potentiometer and connect that all up here from the positive sides and the negative sides of that and make sure you put your LEDs in properly. Remember LED long wire is going to be positive and we're going to put two LEDs inside of this. And then we're going to put in our transistors once again using the Darlington configuration in between these two LEDs just to 
as you can see right there. We'll then add in a 470 ohm resistor inside of here to protect our LEDs. And then we're going to have a lead and then what we're going to be measuring are these two resistors at the bottom past the 25 line or row on our breadboard. And as I said before, a voltmeter is going to measure the voltage difference between two points in a circuit. Now the circuit is going to be representing the voltmeter and it's going to lie to the left of the 25 row here. And we are going to measure the voltage on the right of that 25 row. And we can adjust the resistance of the 50 kilo ohm potentiometer we have here, which is connected to the base of the first transistor. And then as we do this, the LEDs change in brightness because the resistances at the bases of both transistors Transistors are going to be equal and if we turn the dial on the potentiometer until the LEDs have an equal brightness we can determine the voltage by subtracting the percentage turned on the potentiometer from 100 and then multiply that number times 0.09 to get an estimate on our voltage. Now we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor at the top and a 33 kilo ohm resistor at the bottom and if we measure this with our multimeter we get 6.65 volts. Now we can verify that with a formula here. We just take those two resistors we had there. So we can take the top resistor and divide it by the top resistor plus the resistance of the second resistor and multiply that times the battery voltage, which is 9 volts. And you can see here that it comes out to approximately a voltage of 6.9 volts. Now using another calculation based off of the little circuit design, the voltmeter we created in our circuit, what we can do here is if we estimate that the dial was around 30%, it's a rough estimate, and then we subtract that from 100 and multiply that times 0.09, we get an approximate voltage for our little circuit here at 6.3 volts. So pretty cool little experiment here, just thought it would be fun. So there you go guys, there's a rundown of all the different things you can do with transistors. There's many more things and we'll be exploring those as the tutorials continue. Just wanted to send a special thank you out to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the reason why I'm able to make videos like this. So I just wanted to say thank you and please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.